bibliophile. Noun. One who is attracted to intelligence. Join us, fellow fun-loving lover of knowledge, as we dig into your favorite topics with our very own nerdy diatribes, words of wisdom, and takes on life as millennials. Welcome to the Sapio Files. All right, welcome back, everybody. Hello. As you can see, I'm a little clearer today, and that's because I am in New Jersey. We're in the same place. That never happens. It never happens. But today we're in the same place, and we have wine, and we have fun. We have water. We have wine. We had lots of good food. So much good food. It's a good stress-free day. It is a good stress-free day. And speaking of... Speaking of stress, Kayla. Well, Chelsea, I think that we should discuss with listeners ways that we combat stress in our everyday lives. I think that's an amazing idea. Wow. It could be a topic. It could be our topic this week. Yes. Our topic this week is... How we control stress and anxiety in our everyday lives through natural means. Important topic. Definitely a very important topic. Yes. We all have a lot of stress in our lives, whether or not you actually have anxiety or depression or anything that is making it harder for you to relax. Stress is something that we all experience, and it is a natural response of your body. Um, It's a response that starts in your hypothalamus, and it communicates with your nervous system to cause the fight-or-flight response from your adrenal glands, which pump out adrenaline. And normally, that's a great thing, because if you're faced with a lot of danger, it'll put you in a safe place. It'll, it'll get you out of there or help you fight it. But there is that saying that people have all the time. It's like, okay, you're fighting a bear in the woods, but what happens when the bear lives in your living room? Ooh. And I didn't make that up. It's, it's something from a lot of different studies. But for a lot of us, stress has become a chronic problem. And that fight or flight thing is great. To a point, but what happens when that's something you experience every single day? And Chelsea just mentioned this, but it's good to keep in mind that none of us are immune to stress. No. That even a person who may have everything going for them in their life, um, who may know exactly who they are, who they want to become, that person is still susceptible to the S word, stress. (laughs) <laughs> they are. <laughs> so, stress is something we all face. Um, so, in order to combat stress, there's a lot of different things that we can do. Sometimes it has to do with our lifestyle, what we're doing, uh, making sure that we're managing it, or maybe what we're eating or drinking. But we have a lot of different ideas about stress that we want to share with you today. Would you like to share some of your ideas? I would love to. Before I do, you may notice, listeners, that I'm taking a little bit more time to articulate what I'm saying today. And this is because while listening to the last podcast, it was brought to my attention while in the car that I am prone to saying the word like in between sentences. And this deeply bothered me (laughs) more than it should have. It caused me stress. So lots of stress. Well, I didn't edit out as much of of the stuff last week because it was a crazy But you shouldn't have to edit my likes out. Sometimes I do, though. I I know. (laughs) But in any case, I think that this is something that I need to work on. So instead of stressing about it, I decided to challenge myself this week. proactive stance. Proactive stance. Yes. Yes. I decided to challenge myself. So to tie in my challenge with a topic that I'm going to be discussing in the stress podcast... I figured that whenever I said the word like, when it's not grammatically meant to be there, Mm -hmm. for example, I can say, Chelsea, I like red wine. I like red wine too. And that's fine. We both have red wine. It's delicious. That is an appropriate use of the word like. However, if I use it in the middle of thoughts as a placeholder for when I'm thinking, that is an incorrect use of the word like. Kind of like an um. So, we're going to have to hold you to this. Tonight, what's going to happen... Tally. Is... She's going to keep a tally. Okay. What's going to happen is that whenever I say like incorrectly, I have to do a burpee. 
Anybody she's going to do it. I will attest to the fact that she's actually doing it. Anybody that doesn't know what a burpee is, it's basically the combination of a jump back squat into a push up and then a jump up. And it's... It's it's the devil. You can look it up on YouTube. Just look up burpees. Um, oh my gosh, that probably could... That could have been a like. I just said, um, but I didn't. Whew. Anyways. We all say it occasionally. We all do. But in any case, I'm going to do my best not to say like... And if I do, then just know that I will be taking my challenge seriously and doing burpees. All right. So. I may or may not stop you if you say it, if you're in the middle of a good point, but I'll tally it and make you do it later. Yes. So if I do say like, and I'm making a good point, as Chelsea mentioned, she's going to keep tally. And if it ends up working out that I just have to do 10 burpees in a row at the end, then that's totally fine too. Sounds good. Cool. All right. So let's not stress about that. (laughs) And let's get into some of the information about why we stress and what we can do to help combat our stress. Because it's not easy. Not easy being an adult these days or a kid if you happen to be listening to us if you're a kid. But I think most of the adults. Teenagers. It's just not that easy. Life is hard. So what can we do for stress? Well, anybody that has listened to me talk the past few podcasts knows that I may or may not like exercise. So one of my favorite ways to alleviate stress is to exercise. And I actually was able to find a really cool article. I'm not going to read you the entire thing, but the Anxiety and Depression Association of America. If you want to look it up, it's at adaa.org. And they actually outlined a number of reasons why exercise is a great combatant for stress and anxiety. So they talk about the physical benefits of exercise. And of course, anybody that's watched Legally Blonde knows that exercise raises your endorphin levels and endorphins make you happy and happy people just don't kill their husbands. They just don't. They just don't. So... Besides the natural boost in endorphins that individuals get while exercising, it also has been known to improve cognitive brain function. And even though at present there is no cure for cognitive degeneration diseases like Alzheimer's, um, exercise, that counts as a like. I totally ummed. Exercise has been known to take years off of when that type of disease would start. So for example, someone that goes for 20 minute walks every day, that individual, say if they had a predisposition for Alzheimer's in their family, it would not make that go away. But at present, scientists and researchers have decided and based on their theories and conclusions and hypotheses that it might take five years off of when that would start. Very cool. Which is really interesting. And I just love the feeling of exercise because it's cathartic for me. And that's not research. It's not anything that I just read about. But I just always feel so empowered when I exercise. And it's probably the endorphins. It's all scientific. But Endorphins make you happy. I know. But I always feel as though... It's a way that I can take control of something that makes me feel good and healthy when stress often makes me feel out of control. I think that's a great point, especially about the catharsis and finding something that does that. And, you know, exercise is very beneficial to everybody. But if that's not maybe what makes you feel better in the same way, finding any kind of outlet that allows you to release those negative emotions and the catharsis is very important. For me... I use theater, I use acting, I use the arts, and Mm -hmm. that's very relaxing for me, which might sound counterintuitive because a lot of people say things like, oh, well, I would be terrified of being on stage and aren't you terrified? Actually, no, because it's, you you like zen out and you go into this different world where you're just not yourself. So for me, that's a, a different type of outlet. So I think that it's important to find whatever outlet works for you. So it may be exercise. Um, It may be something like what I do, like the theater. Mm -hmm. Or 
it might be something totally different. You want to find what works for you. However, even if you're not using it as your catharsis outlet, it does have benefits to your health. So it is important that we all do some sort of exercise, even if it's a lighter exercise. Um, a lot of the... A lot of yoga is a really lot of great. The gentler exercises like yoga are actually very mindful in practice. And mindfulness is another one that I wanted to talk about today. Being mindful and being present in the moment is a great way to reduce your stress. Whether it's specific meditations or t- just taking some time to breathe and calm down and focus on yourself. You know, there are times when in the middle of a really stressful work day, I will close the door to my office and put on like a five minute meditation just because I need my brain to just chill out. And that's really helpful to me. I know a lot of people who have had great success with using meditations and more of the mindful, like slower exercises, even just taking a nice walk is very cathartic and beneficial and relaxing and helps you be mindful and in the present and let go of whatever stress you have. Actually, I was looking at an article on health.com about the three types of exercise that are the best to alleviate stress, anxiety, and depression. And they list running. They also list hiking or walking in the woods. Mm -hmm. And they list yoga. So, and yoga and hiking have direct correlations to what you were just talking about with mindfulness and being present in the moment and taking the time to just erase everything that's going on and just live in what you're seeing. And I think I was talking to your mom. It was your mom today. You probably were talking to my mom. She always talks to my mom. She says that something, something that she says to her students is that they always, she always wants them to think about where their feet are and that's where they should be. So instead of thinking about the past or thinking too far into the future, they should think about exactly where they are at the time and be mindful of that. And that really helps her students alleviate stress. That actually reminds me of something. Um, If anybody has read the book, The Charisma Myth. I have not. It's a good book. I actually don't have my copy. I lent it to somebody yesterday, but um, (laughs) it's a good book. See, I lend it to people. Um, It is about making yourself a presence and being able to, like, how do we learn charisma? And one of the biggest things in an early chapter that it tells you to do is when you're kind of out of control and not sure, like, what face you're putting forward, to breathe, to relax, and to feel your toes. Like, because they would be glued to the floor. They would be spread out. They can touch something. And if you are connected with what your feet are touching, then you're grounded in the present. Mm. So that was one of the early suggestions in that book, and it just reminded me of that. So your, your mom is so smart. She, she, she is so smart. Good things. I also, similar to what you just said, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts um, besides doing this one. Mm-hmm. And one of my favorites is called The Psychology Podcast, and it's with Dr. Scott Barry Kaufman. And I just listened to episode 134 entitled How to Live with Guts and Confidence, And it talked about what you said, being present. And if you, basically, Dr. Kaufman had another person on his show who I can't remember her name for the life of me right now. And I can probably Google it right now for all of you. But I absolutely can actually because I have her book saved on Amazon. So bear with me. It's okay. I'll cut out the dead space. All right. (laughs) I've got it. His guest was Amy Alcon, spelled A-L-K-O-N. And pardon my language, this is the actual title of her book. It's called Unfuckology, A Field Guide to Living with Guts and Confidence. And she talks about alleviating stress and gaining confidence by really treating your brain like a muscle. And Mm. not, not necessarily that you obviously can't do actual crunches with your brain. But if you think about your brain as a muscle and that you actually have to work through certain things that give you stress and find avenues and ways to alleviate that and train your brain, then really, it's like I said in the last podcast, actually, train your brain as if you're training your body. Yeah. Um, there we go. Hmm? That's a point. I ummed. Oh, okay. 
You're catching it more than I. I, I am. I'm very competitive, listeners. So I'm well, so really far, competing so far with you only myself. Have three tallies. I'm really excited. But in any case, definitely check out that podcast and other podcasts within the Psychology Podcast because all of them are quite good. Definitely. Cool. So, um, another thing that I do in order to alleviate stress, and this is something that was suggest- suggested. Wow. Something that was suggested on a website for support for anxiety and depression. And whether or not you live with anxiety and or depression, it's something that is beneficial to everyone. So I have an anxiety kit. It's like a little zipper case that I keep in my bag at work, put it in my car. I don't always have it on me. I should. I have it on me during like longer parts of the day. But if I go out at night, I might only take like a clutch and not take my anxiety kit. But anyway, it has things that help me to feel better. So whatever that is for you is what we're going in this kit. So mine has things like essential oils. So scents that'll calm me down. Things like lavender. Lavender, lavender is an amazing one. Um, other ones that can calm you down are things like bergamot, um, neroli. Rosemary? Rosemary's a good one. Yeah. Um, one of them is like an orangey scent. So there's a lot, mm. of, there's a lot of good ones. Things that, so that's one thing. Essential oils to calm you down. Um, if you have any kind of medication that helps calm you down or any kind of, even like an herbal remedy that calms you down, you can put extras of that in there because there are days that you might forget it. Um, I also put things like notes from people that are like why they appreciate me if I'm having a day where I feel useless, uh, pictures of important things to me. I have things like uh, tea bags of like relaxing, calming teas. So if I get stuck somewhere and I'm not having an easy time of it, I can do that. I also have things like um, flower remedies, which are like the rescue remedy tablets. If you're not familiar with rescue remedy, it is a tablet that is a flower essence. um, And it's like a chewy, like gummy tablet. It's good. Yeah. And it is a good, like instant relax your body kind of snack, I guess, (laughs) if you want to call it a snack. So I have all these things in my kit. And whether or not you need this many things in your kit, that's up to you. But I find it helpful if I find myself in a bind. So I think it's a good idea to think about what you might need. And whether or not you have a kit, maybe make a drawer in your desk at work. Uh, Things that calm me down if I'm having a stressful day might be something helpful. So I think that's a good idea too. I feel like I instinctually have done that without actually calling it a pack, an anti-anxiety pack. And I don't necessarily have a pack, but in my purse or a bag that I carry, I've been carrying the You Are a Badass book where you wrote me a nice note in mm-hmm. it because I've had a wonderful past few months, but as anybody who has dealt with good stress that can sometimes turn into bad stress just because you're so busy, that's kind of where I've been at. And when busyness makes you stress, sometimes the negative pops up in your head. Yes. So I occasionally will have either a book or a note that, like Chelsea mentioned, that makes me feel empowered or happy, or I'll make sure, I always have pictures of people that I care about with me. So, yes. It's important to have those things. They're very helpful. Um, So I mentioned a lot of things in that about different items that help me. So I did want to go into a list that I made actually a while back for some people who had asked me about some ways to help them through their anxiety, their depression, their stress. Oh, number four, yeah. So, all right, I'm going to go through these. And these are things that either I've used or know about or people that I know have used in order to help them with their stress, their anxiety, their depression. They don't necessarily need to be something for clinical depression, but these are things that help. So the one that I just mentioned before, the little tablets, is a type of Bach flower remedy, which is my first one. So Bach flower remedies are just flower essences that help you relax and help you focus. So I use Rescue Remedy and sometimes Vervain, which is good for those like spiraling, ruminating thoughts. You can 
check the descriptions and see what kind of symptoms they help you with. They are very effective. And I found out about them from my acupuncturist, which is also another one that is a great suggestion. Acupuncture, people get very nervous about because they're like, oh, I don't like needles. It's actually the most relaxing thing. I, I love acupuncture. I fall asleep during it. And it helps take off the edge of stress, of anxiety, of depression, of any other illnesses. It's, it's a very good centering activity. I was a skeptic when it came to acupuncture until Chelsea convinced me to give it a try. And it has, to this day, been one of the only things that consistently helps my hip soreness. I have had a hip injury since 2009. And acupuncture is by far the best thing for it. Mm -hmm. At least when it was really, really flaring up. Yes, definitely. All right, so I also mentioned essential oils. You can use any number of different scents that help with different feelings, emotions, um, maybe physical aches and pains. I put them on in the inside of your ears, on your spine, on your temples, wrists, soles of feet, and the center of your chest. Those are the spots for anxiety and depression for relaxing yourself so that's like connecting your nervous system together those are the best spots to blend it another one that I've recently started using um, if anybody has had a hard time balancing their stress and they find themselves wired and tired all the time and they can't get through the afternoon without passing out but then they're up all night that was something that I struggled with for a long time I researched a lot about it and that those are actually early signs of adrenal fatigue, which basically just means that you are pumping out too many stress hormones that your body can't quite keep up and your adrenals are having a hard time. So one thing that I've been using, which I really like, it gives you a little instant benefit, but it also helps build over time, is um, a, sub a, a substance called Adrenal Edge. So it's just little drops. It's like a dropper. You can put it into water or you can just put it directly in your mouth. Um, and it helps you just balance your adrenaline and your, your norepinephrine. And it, it's very centering and relaxing and helps you sleep at the right times and be alert at the right times. So that's definitely something I'd recommend if you feel like your adrenals are a little out of control. The next one I want to talk about is actually probiotics. I love probiotics. Probiotics are so helpful and people don't realize how helpful they are. They help you to balance your stomach and your gut microbiome, which many people don't realize is directly connected to your mood. Your gut has receptors for your neurotransmitters that control your mood, such as serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine. Those are the three biggies that help control your mood and center you. And there are foods that can help you increase those, but... If your gut microbiome is off, you're not going to get those benefits from the foods. So that is something that is very helpful. So I would definitely suggest probiotics. It also helps you not gain weight randomly because it clears out that whole right. area. I have to say, one of my colleagues at UCC, so I work for University College Cork, and they have a huge food science division there. And one of the big researches is researching gut health. And mm -hmm. how microbes impact anxiety, depression, stress levels. And other than taking probiotics, which is amazing, and you can find them in some shakes, you can find them, you can actually get probiotic pills. Um, but another, there, there's one for Tally. Okay. If anybody's heard of kombucha, that's a good mm -hmm. drink that's full of probiotics. It's actually a fermented tea. Not a fan of all of them, but the strawberry sage one is my favorite. And then things like kefir, which is a really, really thick yogurt, kind of an acquired taste, but if you get the chocolate kind, it's pretty good. Those are really high in probiotics too. And if you get kefir, you can mix it in with another protein powder and kind of balance out the taste for that. Awesome. Can you tell I do athletic stuff, guys? <laughs> no, it's great. <laughs> All right. So number five is St. John's Wort. This, there's an important caveat to. It is an herb that is a natural antidepressant. It is effective. It is helpful. It comes in teas. 
it comes in tablets. There's a lot of different ways you can get it. However, if you are actually already being treated for anxiety or depression, it is dangerous. It will double up what your antidepressant is doing and can make you a lot worse, it can cause serotonin syndrome. So if you are on a prescription SSRI, no. do not use St. John's Wort. Really, it makes your head all weird. I, I tried it once, actually, to see if it made it better or worse. Um, I had just a teeny bit of a St. John's Wort tea, and I had this like flaring headache, and I stopped. And I was, and I'm fine. And you're fine. St. John's Wort. So it, the difference is prescription SSRI. Correct. So be very careful with that one. However, it is effective if you are not being treated. Very effective. Yes. So that's why I included it here. Okay, we're almost at the end. Um, hypnosis is another good one. Hypnosis and meditations. There are sleep hypnoses that you can play while you're asleep that help you recenter yourself and deal with your anxiety, deal with your stress. Two people who do sleep hypnosis are Michael Seeley and Jody Whiteley. Those are my favorite ones. But there are lots of different choices as well. All right. Those are some suggestions. Also, there are apps. Because this is a digital world. There are some apps that are very helpful. One that I find helpful is Mood Tracker, which helps you find patterns and triggers. So you just track how you're feeling each day. Another one is Happify, which is designed for people who are struggling with anxiety or depression, but it can be useful for any kind of stress. And it helps, it's games and exercises that help break your thought patterns, your negative thought patterns. So you would tell it how you're feeling and it gives you games. So there's one that's kind of like Depression Angry Birds, where like you yes. blow up, uh, you blow up the one. negative words, the negative thoughts, you just like, you blow them up, you shoot right at them, it's great. So there's that one. There's also Calm, which is guided meditations to help. Um, another one that I've that's I didn't list on here that I've used recently is um, for the women. There is a tracker that is called My Flow, which is it's a period tracker. But what it does is tell you where your hormones are at this moment in the month. That's really smart. And it helps you figure out like you're gonna have a surge of estrogen today, so that may make you feel like this. To combat that, you want to eat these healthy foods this week. Or today is not a great day for high impact exercise because of what your body is doing. So that's very interesting too because for the women out there, a lot of the exercise programs or the way systems are run are based on men who have the same hormonal level across. They have a daily cycle. Like they have different hormones in the, the morning and afternoon and night. But their baseline of hormone is pretty similar across the board. We go up and down throughout the month. So it's important to know what your body's doing at any given period in time so that you can correctly identify what you need. So, you know, stay educated. It's, it's all very important. Um, and the last app that I have listed here was if you are starting any kind of medical treatment, there's an app called Start that helps you track your treatments and gauge how well they're working, especially if you have multiple ones. Um, it assesses how much progress you've made and if this is working or if you should talk to a doctor about switching it. So that's something that I found helpful as well. Those so this are is, great. This is my whole long list of non-medicinal treatments. So I also, not on this list, but also that something that is non-medicinal, my boss, the CEO of the place I work for, Arlene, is brilliant. And one of the things that she had us do as a group for one of our trainings as a, I guess, a group of colleagues was talk about ways to train your brain to don't, it doesn't take away stress, but it allows you to compartmentalize stress so that you can handle it at a certain time. And I'm sure that all of us have had that work day where someone's not being particularly kind to you or you're dealing with someone who is maybe a stressful client, someone who makes you feel down, low, not worthy, etc. We've all had really bad days at work. Absolutely. And one thing that Arlene told me to do was to imagine you have a red bucket. Your bucket can be any color. Mine is red. 
And whenever something comes at you that bothers you and causes you stress, to place that in the red bucket, acknowledge that it's a negative, and then let it go. And just imagining the placement of something that's stressing you out into some place that can't hurt you, for some reason that really works for me. I've also heard of that same concept as a balloon. Ooh. You put it in a balloon and you watch it fly. It flies away. You see it. And it's like, oh, hey, there was a balloon. There it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it just goes. It flies away. And you acknowledge that you saw it, but it's not able to affect you any longer. Mm-hmm. I'm all about training your brain. Hey, you know what? It's very important, and it's an important skill for getting through life. You know, we have much more stressful lives than a few generations ago. There's a lot more expected of people now between work, between um, what we do at home, just all over. There's a lot expected of us. And it's think- a more complex world. And because it's so fast-paced and so much is happening all the time, we don't really have those relaxation times or those let's take a step back or today is day of rest kind of things that were built into life several hundred years ago. And I think the added benefit that we get from technology being connected also allows us to be a lot more stressed out because we see not only what's happening that stresses us out in our own world, in our small bubbles, but also globally. And, and there's also that, FOMO. Yeah. <laughs> yes. There's also that. Um, but I also, you, you made a point of staying relaxed and really calming yourself down. And I feel like I have a really hard time with that. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm very good at compartmentalizing, so I'm not too stressed. Mm-hmm. But as far as really just taking the time to relax, I or even do something like yoga, mm-hmm. I'm just not wired that way. I have to almost force myself to breathe a little bit. Mm-hmm. So if anybody else is out there like me, that's why I exercise. <laughs> but, <laughs> exercise is um, a great outlet. But... I, I know that I oftentimes will ask Chelsea or my friend Evie, um, both of whom are particularly good at mindfulness, and Evie is actually the one that turned me on to the probiotics, the kefir, and the kombucha, but they, they're they both such relaxing personalities in ways that I feel like I'm lacking, so I you inspire me. Thanks. Thank you. You too, Evie, if you're listening. Hi, so Evie. I, I appreciate my friends who... so. Which leads me to my point. I don't want to say like lean on your friends to the point that they're that they're carrying your weight. But if you see your friend doing something that inspires you or makes it more simple for you to understand yourself or the way that you should be handling something or the way that you think you could try handling something, then feel free to ask them what they do and absolutely ask them for advice. And you'd be surprised what kind of stuff they'd have to share and how much it benefits you in the long run. And like we said about two episodes ago, your friends, your inner circle is a huge part of mm-hmm. balancing yourself and your life. You need that inner circle. You need your, your five close people. So and make sure they're the people that support you. Yeah. Don't waste your time on the wrong people. Pick the right people. Yes. It sounds like a lecture. It does. Pick the right friends. You better have the right friends, people. Especially if you're a teenager listening. Pick your right friends. <laughs> I'm not an older sibling. No. Clearly not. Not at all. No. Me nope. neither. Mm-mm. Not at all. <laughs> anyway. All right. So. I have... You have what? This. Oh. Yes. So. Do it. Another thing I wanted to speak to everyone about was I had mentioned before that there are ways that you can use food to help balance yourself. And this is something that I've always been particularly sensitive to. Kayla can tell you this. If I don't eat the right food, if my blood sugar is off, if, I don't know, I had a drink and I didn't have enough food in me, I'm not a happy camper. No bueno. I am not. It's not a pretty picture. Sometimes I shut down and I'm just like not even there and people are like, are you okay? And I'm just not reacting. Or sometimes I'm just crazy and I don't make any sense. <laughs> um, that's just, that's the, the one of the worst parts of me. But it is what something. One of the worst parts of me. Yeah, it is. But it's something that I've worked towards fixing Regulating. over the years. Regulating. 
not fixing. Here we go. Exactly. Work towards regulating over the years. Positive words. So, when you pay attention to the foods that you are eating and how they affect your chemical balance and your neurotransmitters, you can feel a lot more calm and a lot more healthy. So what I have here is I have a list of the three biggies, the three neurotransmitters that affect your mood. I have the symptoms of imbalance, how you can tell if that neurotransmitter is out of balance, and some foods that would help you put it back in balance. So here we go, take note. You should also post this. I will post this. This will be in the show notes. Serotonin is the first one. That's the biggie. That's the anxiety one. That's the big anxiety one. Sometimes that that is imbalanced is feeling extremely anxious, ruminating thoughts, self-hatred, low self-confidence, sudden mood swings, sensitivity, headaches, insomnia, lots and lots of stuff. Also, if you find yourself craving sugar, carbs, or alcohol, it's probably a serotonin imbalance. Huh. So that's something to keep in mind. Also, trouble sleeping, panic attacks, things like that. That's the big anxiety one. Your, your key to feeling that your serotonin is off is your anxiety is not regulated. It's out of control. It may not be proportional to what you are actually experiencing. You may be having a stronger reaction to something than what actually is happening. Foods to balance this. Whole grain carbs. I say whole grain carbs because just like a white sugar cookie, that's not going to help you. So whole grain is important. But carbs are not the devil. People who are on all of these fad diets, carbs are not the devil. And if you don't eat carbs, your serotonin is going to go crazy and then you're going to go crazy. So please eat carbs. Please, please do eat carbs. Eat healthy carbs. Eat carbs. Um, On that same line, popcorn, potatoes. Those are big ones. Also, going away from the carbs, eggplant, mangoes, blueberries, pineapple, dark chocolate, Eggs, green tea, turkey, brown rice, that's also a carb, kiwi, bananas, and salmon are the big serotonin regulators. There's a reason that Professor Lupin had Harry Potter eat chocolate after the Dementors attacked. It helps. It really helps. It really helps. It really, really helps. Dark chocolate especially. Dark chocolate is actually very healthy for you. It's actually a stronger antidepressant. If they were to able to harness dark chocolate to the same level that they have in a lot of the SSRIs, it would be stronger than any of them. They can't get the right dosage without you eating, like, pounds and pounds of chocolate. Exactly. But it does affect your brain technically better than an antidepressant, just not with the same potency. Mm Mm-hmm. So that's serotonin. Number two, dopamine. This is another biggie. So signs... Dopamine is the pleasure chemical. Dopamine is the chemical that's released when you have, like, a great meal, when you are... um, in a great mood, it's, it's a chemical released during sex. So that's that pleasure chemical. But your body can't always regulate it or produce enough of it. And you always need a certain level of it to be able to enjoy things in the world. So signs that your dopamine is off is extreme fatigue, lack of motivation, trouble thinking clearly, um, inability to feel pleasure like you would be doing something that should make you happy and you're not, um, loss of interest in things that used to be interesting, um, oversleeping, trouble finishing tasks, things of that nature. So, for dopamine, one of the biggies is red meat, which is also not the devil. People on fad diets. <laughs> I, I know. I, I, I'm, it makes me so nervous for these people. So honestly, red meat is huge for dopamine balance. Honestly, every... Just, just listen to what she's saying. It's all about regulating portions not about cutting out things yeah your body needs all of these things to function at its best level yeah please don't cut out full groups of things whatever oh. diet you do you can you can change like timing of what you're eating or portions or balancing like percentages of it with exercise that's fine just please don't cut out groups because it will make you so much st- more stressed out and worse okay so red meat also almonds which i love um pumpkin woohoo Mango again, avocado, bananas again, apples, kale, dark chocolate again, Mm. because dark chocolate is everything, coffee, Mm -hmm. oatmeal, yogurt, eggs, duck, fish, (laughs) Brussels sprouts, and acai berries. 
Those are the biggies for dopamine. They're not the only things, but those are the biggies that... This whole list sounds delicious. It does. I want all of these foods right now. Mm Mm-hmm. Okay. And your final one, norepinephrine, which is the third main chemical that regulates your mood. It's the triad of these that controls your stress, your anxiety, your depression. The third one, norepinephrine. You can tell your norepinephrine is off. This is connected directly to your adrenaline. So it's like, notice it has epinephrine in it, norepinephrine. It has that phrase in it. It is, this is your adrenal function and your focus. So signs that this is off. Inability to handle stress, fibromyalgia or any other general pain, inability of fo- to focus. So that feeling of having too many tabs open, that like ADD kind of feeling, that's an, actually ADD is a norepinephrine imbalance. That's, that's what it is. Uh, difficulty controlling your reactions, slow reaction time, slow processing, brain fog, increased appetite, and trouble regulating your blood sugar. So these are signs that your norepinephrine is off. So especially if your stress level is super high, which is what we're talking about today, you probably have to check your norepinephrine. Norepinephrine foods include lentils, cantaloupe, broccoli, red cabbage, chicken, any dark green leaf, shellfish, whole grains, bananas, almonds, sesame seeds, and lima beans. Hmm. Lots of good food choices. So I think that all sounds delicious. And I agree. I would like to have all of those foods. So, but for real though, I mean, I'm not saying eat all the foods at the same time. But no. think about... There's a reason that your body craves what it craves. So learn to tune into your body and pay attention and that'll help with your stress a lot. Now, if you're craving like brownies every day, then that's different. You probably, you know, are having some kind of sugar dependency. But if you're randomly craving different foods, you're like, today I feel like meat or today I really want pasta or today I want some vegetables. Mm -hmm. Pay attention to what you want because there's probably a reason. Your body is good at telling you what it needs if you learn to tune in. I think... The best example I or the best memory example I have of that is Chelsea knows, and anybody that has known me for a long time knows that I have not always been good at eating vegetables. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first year that I moved to New Jersey, I was really trying to focus on eating healthier and becoming more mindful and listening to my body and what it had to say. And I remember walking with Chelsea one day and saying, Oh my gosh, I really want spinach, which for me was very, very strange. And now, even though I don't particularly care for eating spinach on its own all that much, if I put it in smoothies with peanut mm-hmm. butter, it kind of masks the taste and I still get the spinach. It is a dark so green leaf, it which is, a, is one of those... Norepinephrine. Yeah. So, just listen to your body. And even if, you, if you're, you've never been a vegetable person, but for some reason your body's saying, I need a vegetable or I need a fruit or I need something like that, make sure you're listening. Because it, it knows what's going on. It does. So... I tend to find that food regulation helps me as well. And you know, I don't do it perfectly. It's not like I have perfect meal plans and I only eat things that will affect my serotonin that day. You know, I'll go out and I'll have whatever I want to eat when I go out. I had ice cream today. Me too. You can have the things that you want. But it's important to think about what your body needs. So these are some chemical ways to combat extreme stress and anxiety. What about some just fun ways? So, what I, before we go into this topic, what I like to say is that never discount a way that you alleviate stress just because nobody else is doing it, as long as it's yes. safe. So Totally. That's, um, a good, that's a good caveat. I just ummed. I think that's five. Okay. In any case, I'm saying that as a preface to what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> so, besides exercising and trying my best to eat correctly and making sure that I do just like Chelsea does I do have my essential oils that I use to go to sleep I have a relaxio app on my phone that Mm. makes it easier for me to go to sleep with some white noise and some crickets so I do have my ways of taking stress away from my life but then I have my random one which is called the YouTube fun songs to dance to playlist love that so I kid you not, if I'm having a really bad day at work, if I get an email that just drives me up the wall and makes me want to find a punching bag or cry, then I will turn off my inbox. I will shut my computer laptop monitor off. I will go on to my cell phone. 
I will look up my fun songs to dance to playlist on YouTube and I will play five minutes of these songs and dance like an idiot in my home office until I am just so in a happy place that I can get back to work because there's nothing worse than trying to work efficiently and effectively when you're feeling like Mm -hmm. you're nothing or you're sad or you're not competent or someone makes you feel that way. So this is my own stupid way and stupid. Yeah. But does it work? Yeah, it does. Of combating stress. And do other people do this? Maybe not. Do other people do this? Perhaps. Do I care? Not really because it helps me. So that's my silly way of doing it. And Sometimes you do whatever makes you happy, you know? Some of the songs are wham, wham, like wake me up before you go, go. I've got Phil Collins on there. I've got the Click 5 on there, Mm -hmm. old school. I've got Christina Aguilera on there. You know, I... Sometimes you need your guilty pleasure songs. Mm Mm-hmm. And you just let it go. Got some Disney. (laughs) Disney's great. You just said let it go. Let it go, <laughs> let it go. All but right. anyways, a lot of it is just me dancing like a fool. Footloose is also on there. Footloose. But, so that's my thing. That's my fun thing that I do that's just kind of silly. Actually, that just reminded me, I like to sing. I probably will dance around too, but it's not the same if it's not a full-on sing-along. <laughs> or, I, I do sing... For real, like I do sing in performance, but the act of singing, I think because it makes you take deep breaths and it makes you kind of release, that helps me calm down too. So sometimes if I'm having a bad day, I will pick some songs, I'll put on, you know, an album that has songs that I can sing to Mm -hmm. and I will just belt it and that helps me. So we all need something that helps. Other things, I mean, I take walks a lot, which we said before. Um, yes, I mean, in terms taking of stress, breaks, taking breaks, walk, taking walks, stretching. Oh, stretching is a good one because your body holds your stress. My aunt Lynn actually used to have her classes. My aunt Lynn just retired from teaching, and she taught fourth, fifth, and sixth grade for a long, long time. And at the beginning of every school day, she'd have her kids do song, mm-hmm. kind of like camp songs. She and told then, us this. Um, Many podcasts ago when she made a cameo. It was Mm -hmm. the music one. And she'd have them do stretching. And she'd pick a different child each day to do stretching and to lead it. And the stretches were actually legit stretches because my Aunt Lynn was an athlete for a long time. So it got the kids moving. It got their the blood pumping. And it really helped them out with Mm. stress levels. And she had them do it before tests too. Um, Another one that helps me is writing. Mm-hmm. So whether it's writing something full on and creative or just writing down your thoughts, just getting things out is very cathartic and helpful for me as well. Sometimes if an individual person is bothering me, I will write a letter as yeah. to why and then just, you don't send the letter. I've you done that You just rip times. it up or burn it up afterward or throw it out, but it allows you to get out all of that negative emotion and then move on. It's a good one. Thank you. We've both done that one. Written letters to people? Yes. Oh, totally. Mm Mm-hmm. What else? Um, Animals. Volunteer. I was going to say animal shelter or having animals around. Being around animals is a huge stress reliever. Actually, there was some kind of study, and I don't recall exactly what it was, but that like a cat's purr scientifically does something to your heart rate to alleviate stress. And I'm sure it works with other animals as well. But there was something about like the the frequency of the purr against your heart rate. If you're if you're touching a cat who's purring, the benefits of that. So having animals around doesn't have to be a cat, cat, dog, any other kind of cuddly animal. They're very good for your mental health. They're actually, for many people, prescribed. They're you people like need their support animals. They actually are starting I, I've seen them I travel a lot for work so I'm frequently in airports and I'm starting to more frequently see therapy dogs in airports mm-hmm. and they're there for the people at the airport yeah so they'll have a trainer with them and they'll have a little vest on that says I am a therapy dog come and say hi to me 
And you'd be surprised how many people actually stop and pat these dogs and they just, you look at their shoulders as they're walking towards the dog and then you, they walk away. It's so much more relaxed. Like mm-hmm. the tension's gone. So they're actually putting them in airports and it's a way that they're, that's amazing. It's their last bit of training before they go into hospitals and mm-hmm. children's wards and everything. But the fact that they're definitely in Albany airport. So if you fly out of, out of Albany, there are adorable that's dogs. Amazing. So I love that. Mm-hmm. Animals are great. Any kind of animal that is friendly to you. Something for me, helping others and volunteering. That totally puts your life into a new perspective Mm -hmm. and kind of helps minimize the stress that you're going through. Now, you may not always have time during a high stress situation to stop and do that, but if you do have time, it is a good way. If you're dealing with chronic ongoing stress or anxiety, it is Mm -hmm. a good way to help alleviate that. I was going to say either chronic stress or anxiety or if you are dealing with something that has been a difficulty externally for a long, long time. Yeah. Oftentimes it's... Well, it's chronic stress, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be... Clinical. Yeah. Clinical is different than chronic. Chronic just means it keeps going. Correct. Thank you. Yes. Excellent. I know lots about the words. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so random. Also, I know that this was something I mentioned in my purse of rescue things, but having... I have three or four books that are my happy books Mm -hmm. that I have on hand with me just to read if I'm having a bad day. Mm -hmm. One of them is Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. Great book. Another one is, I should say other ones are any of the Harry Potter books. I also love, I also love books that are really inspiring. So I will read To Kill a Mockingbird over and over again. And things like, I know why the caged bird sings. And things such as that. So I will find things that... I will actively look for things that inspire me. I books also are great. I have a book of quotes. Yeah. I have a book of my favorite quotes. Yeah, I actually have one of those too. It's like mm-hmm. in a notebook where I write down quotes. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's a lot of great literature out there. Even just light and fluffy stuff if you just want to feel happy. Mm-hmm. Just like cute little like chiclet or... Um, basically just self-help things in the sense of like here's just some fun things fun quotes or like some of those fun memoirs Mm -hmm. from actors who actors or other famous people who are just like here's a funny story amy schumer amy Amy schumer's book do it lauren graham lauren graham's book do it and then mindy kaling do it (laughs) they all have great (laughs) memoirs and then since we're talking about things that we do personally now that we're in this part of the podcast, I would be remiss if I didn't mention, and for those of you who are agnostic or atheist, you could tie this in with meditation, but but, but prayer for me works. Uh, Just saying, just saying something into the world and saying, I would really like help with this. Even if you don't believe in a higher power, just offering it up to whatever you believe in, nature, karma, Absolutely. Is really, really helpful. Putting that intention mm-hmm. out there. For me, it's God, but for people that may not believe in God. Absolutely. It, yeah. And I, I agree that that is powerful and helpful. Mm-hmm. And whether it's God or any specific religion for you, anything higher than yourself. So even if you consider yourself an atheist, I'm sure that there are things in the world that you consider mm-hmm. higher than yourself. Even if it's like the earth right. is higher than yourself. Mm-hmm. Or any kind of spirituality whatsoever. So offer it up to something bigger than you. Mm-hmm. If it's God for you, like I mean, like Kayla and I, it is a God for us. Um, so that's that's great. If it's not, if it's something else, if it's um, art or science or mm-hmm. whatever you believe in that's a big thing, mm-hmm. you know, get, like release your problems, offer it up to that. Yep. You don't have to be any particular religion. But having something bigger than you makes life more stable, makes it a happier life for you. Mm-hmm. And then finally, again, I will use the word remiss again because I feel like it's important. If you feel as though you your stress levels are to the point that you can't do it alone anymore, please go talk to someone. I Absolutely. went to counseling for five years steadily and it was the best decision I made for my mental health. And 
Um, so if there's ever a point where you feel like that you need that additional help, please don't be ashamed to go talk to someone professionally because that's what they're there for. And they have phenomenal ideas of how to train your brain. There I go again. Mm -hmm. Um, and ways to really focus on the positives in your life and treat the negatives as stepping stones and learning moments and ways to better understand the world around you and then how you fit into it as opposed to just completely negative. Definitely. Um, as Kayla said, there is absolutely no shame in asking for help. In fact, I think there is more shame in, in not asking for help. Mm -hmm. And I mean, like Kayla said, I've been to therapy before on and off for many years. I've also been medicated for anxiety and depression before and gone through all different kinds of treatments and like both of us have done acupuncture. acupuncture. So oh. there is no shame in admitting that something is going on with you and taking those steps to help. I know that at times it's hard to do that, but if you can even just tell one person, just reach out to like one close friend, that's a start and they can help get you to where you need to go. And always be there for your friends who do reach out to you. And Make I, sure that you keep that in mind. Absolutely. And I feel like this is a topic that does get, um, here we go again, six, does get brought up a few times in podcasts. But the only reason we do mention it is because we're, we feel so passionately that people just, I, I, at least I feel passionately that I need to be an advocate for those that may be too afraid to speak up. Absolutely. I was too afraid to speak up for a long, long time. As was and, I. And it's just so important that all of you listening, I don't know all of you, but I truly believe in your capacity to be your best selves. And if that means talking to someone, please do it. Right. And this, this podcast bridges the gap between normal stress and clinical issues. Exactly. But anywhere in between there, we're not saying if you ask for help, that means you are somebody who is just, you have this mental condition that is, terrible you might not necessarily have that that is totally fine you could still need help and please remember that mental health is health it is just as important as the rest of your health your brain's an organ it is your brain is a very important organ so please remember that you need to take care of it like you take care of the rest of your body you know if you injured yourself if you couldn't walk you would take time off of work so if you can't function because of your stress that's no less important. And just keep that in mind and keep yourself happy. Do things that make you happy. If you feel like you can't access that happiness anymore from those things, see somebody about how to access it again. Uh, take care of your mind and your body. Um, exercise with eating correctly. And make sure that you don't take life too seriously all the time. You need some time for light hearted stuff and I know the world is a serious place and people get stressed about what's in the news and people get stressed about what's happening at work and in their lives and with their families and with their friends and that's all real but please take time for the fun things too absolutely and no one has ever been hurt by someone who tries to live life with positive intention despite the negativity so be that light for people if say you don't suffer from chronic stress or say you are one of those people who you're incredibly self-actualized like good for you amazing i'm still not there yet but if you're having a great day try to pass on that good day to other people smile at someone make sure you say thank you when your barista gets your order right at starbucks hold yeah, the door saying, for have someone a, at the have supermarket a nice day. yeah say thank you so makes a huge difference huge difference be that light smile be polite. Now, be a polite person. Be polite to everybody. <laughs> if you know that reference, you get a bonus point. <laughs> Some of you do. All right. All right. Um, seven. And that's perfect. Seven is my favorite number. I will now do seven burpees before we end this podcast. All right. So we're going to listen to Kayla do seven burpees because <laughs> she said um and or like seven times. Now, I probably said it more than that, but I wasn't counting mine. But... I feel like I even became a bit more 
understandable because I was really thinking my words through. You did. This was great. All right. All right, here we go. She's going to do it. I'm okay. counting. I'm watching her. Okay. Ready and go. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Woo! She did Spartan burpees too. So those are the She did up. Spartan burpees with a push up. Because she's hardcore like that. <sighs> now I need some water. All right, we're going to get some water. After exercise, because water's important. <laughs> Have a great week. Thank you so much for listening. As always, please subscribe if you haven't. Give us a like or... Um, Follow Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, all the above. If you really like us, write a comment or like a review on um, iTunes. Yeah, that any... helps more people hear our podcast. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're, we're crazy and quirky sometimes, but hopefully we're helping brighten your days as well. And if you have any of your own tips, I'm still out of breath. If you have any of your own tips for relieving stress, please share them with us. Even if they're silly, like listening to Wake Me Up Before You Go-Go by Wham. That's great. Um, please do. And um, I'm not counting that one. <laughs> no. All right. Thank you. Wake me up before you go-go. Don't leave me hanging out like, like a yo-yo. yo-yo. Wake me up before you go <laughs>